another language. Look, no feather. I'm going to show you how to use Duolingo for schools. I'm Madame Sensei. I teach French, Spanish, and Japanese to high schoolers here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Today, I'm going to talk about some possible classroom supports you can use if you want to use Duolingo as your curriculum, or you just want to supplement with some actual physical classroom supports. Now, first of all, let me take you to the brand new, completely redesigned Duolingo for Schools. It's so beautiful. Right here in the curriculum button on Duolingo for Schools, you are going to see a word list for every single skill in the tree. Oh my gosh, this is so helpful. You can click right here and go right to the tip if you want. But let's look at this word list and everything you can do with that. All right. I am going to change my camera and you're going to get to see my face for this episode. Okay, so the first thing I did was I took those words and I printed them on cardstock. I did cardstock so that I could have them every single year, never have to reprint them, all right? And then I printed them all in different colors so I could easily tell which one was which so I didn't get lost in the different units, you know. At any rate, what I do, I've got several games I play with these cards. First of all, one thing I do is I may be holding them, and then I comedically trip and throw them all over the classroom. And the students have to scramble and pick them up. And then when they pick them up, they have to run around the classroom and meet with other students to uh, form phrases and sentences. Another thing I can do with them is I can put them, just take a stack and put it in stations. One thing I might do is I might put a stack of them at a station. So when I have the students working around the room in stations, they go to one desk and it has dice and they roll the dice and the dice correspond to some conjugation that they have to do. Or at another station, uh, they'll have this stack that, and they can put it together right in the on the table and spread it out and everything and make little um, phrases. Okay. Um, I've also gone through Duolingo because I do it myself to make sure that I know what all my students are doing. And sometimes I just cut and paste from Duolingo the full sentences. Okay. So now my students have full sentences. And I can either do this again with stations or with comedically tripping. Or what I like to do there is partner up the students and say, okay, you guys together, here's some sentences from this unit put them together into a story and we get lots of really wacky stories. So that's one possibility using the curriculum guide. The next thing that I do with Duolingo as the basis of my curriculum is let me show you the very, very best thing I have ever purchased with my classroom money. Mini whiteboards and markers. Okay, this is the best investment you will ever make. Um, I used to use old socks that the kids would erase them with, but uh, eventually I got enough money, enough classroom money from the PTSA, ask your PTSA for erasers, so super fun. So uh, back before we were one-to-one -one with computers, I would project Duolingo right there on my smart board and um, we'd have one sentence and then we just work, at, work through it whole class. Now, what you do there is you don't ever tell them that they're right or wrong. You just look at them and say, hmm, hmm, close. Of course, use the target language, you know, um, raise an eyebrow, whatever. They'll correct themselves, okay? And, and for me, I think it's fine if they're looking around the classroom and sneaking glances at everybody else's boards because that's reinforcement, okay? If they're like, oh, I got it wrong, and they rewrite it, that's okay. They're still rewriting it. They're still looking at it. They're still thinking about it. It's all good reinforcement. So that was super fun. But nowadays, uh, because uh, we are one-to-one, -one, of course, after the crazy year, um, nowadays, uh, what I do is a kind of like a Mad Libs kind of thing that the students really love. Let me switch back to um, showing you my screen, and I will show you what I do. 
All right, the last thing I want to show you today also uses the mini whiteboards and the markers. And oh my gosh, the students love this so much. Do you remember the curriculum guide I showed you from Duolingo for Schools? Well, I took all the words from there and some words from previous units also. Um, for some reason, I chose basics one to show you. So there's not that many in this column, a couple of verbs, but I've separated them. We've got anything that could be a subject here, verbs here. Um, and for in this case, these are direct objects or uh, predicate nouns. All right, just because we're in basics ones. So what I do is I divide the class up. I tell them to get into groups of three. Okay, if you've got a group of four, I'll explain that in a moment, all right? But get in groups of three. If I've got adjectives when they're uh, further on in the, the month and they know some adjectives, then we'll be groups of four, adverbs, of course, groups of five, whatever. So I've got the columns. And this is basically Mad Libs and it gets really goofy and really funny. So you have the students count off in their group, all right? Who's gonna be number one? Who's gonna be number two? Who's gonna be number three? And then you show them the list you've made, all right? Each one gets a mini whiteboard and a marker, and they can't talk to each other. So as quickly as they can, person number one will choose one of these. Person number two will choose one of these. And again, normally there's more than two verbs, but that's just the one I happen to open. Person number three is going to choose one of these. All right. As soon as they're ready, their group all jumps up and gets themselves in order. They hold their boards up in order so that they make a sentence. And they have to make any changes that they need to make to make the sentence make sense. So they might have to add, in this case, this is French, they might have to add a, a definite article. Um, they'll have to conjugate the verb to match whatever the subject was, all right? And because they weren't looking at each other, it gets really super goofy. And you want that because it's the goofy sentences that they're going to remember. So uh, this game can be as complicated as you like. And then um, after they've made their sentence and you're walking around, you're like, hmm, not quite or, oh, perfect. When it's perfect, of course, you read it aloud to the whole class and giggles ensue. But when all the groups have gone, you simply change uh, the numbers and say, okay, person number two, you're now in the first column. All right, person number three, you're now, you know, change them however you want. And then you can do this as many times as you want until they know all these words. Now, what if you've got four people? Well, you can add adjectives. You can add adverbs. You can um, have them in the in basics. My extra thing was a and. So uh, the, I just have a, a fourth person adding another thing here. If you've got only two people in a group, um, you could have say, okay, you know, you group, one of you is going to have to do double duty for this round or whatever, uh, but you can figure it out. Being flexible is all part of being a teacher, right? All right. Comment on your favorite games to play uh, in the, uh, the comment section of the forums. All right. Thank you. Post your questions about pedagogy and using Duolingo for schools in the Duolingo educators forum. You're going to get to this by up at the top bar, learn is your regular tree. And then you go over here to these three dots that say more. Here's the discuss button right there. And that will take you to the educators forum. And you can click on new post. You can respond to somebody else's post. Um, there's a ton of helpful people on this forum, ready to take your questions, ready to have wonderful conversations with you about uh, education and teaching and um, troubleshooting. And I'm telling you during the pandemic, this was my lifeline being here and being able to talk to people. I'd also like to make a plug for the Duolingo Educator Network. This is a little more formal uh, than the Educators Forum. Uh, the Educators Network meets in a group on Facebook and we discuss pedagogy, we discuss education stuff. We have fun little movie nights and, and blue kit nights. And uh, we just basically collaborate with people all around the world. We're the ones that Duolingo tested Duolingo for schools on. We get uh, previews of cool stuff Duolingo's doing. 
Uh, this is honestly the best professional learning community I belong to. I'm telling you during the pandemic, it was so nice to have a group of people who were experimenting alongside with me and, and uh, we were all lifting each other up during the craziness of the last year. So I highly, highly encourage you to join the Duolingo Educators Network. Another language